Ever since I've gotten my first iPhone, I have been constantly trying to affect my home screen layout for myself. And after 4 years of running an iPhone, I think I am finally at the point where I am proud of it. So today, I am making this video to share with you guys hopefully my last iPhone home screen for a while. And also along with that, I will be sharing a few of my favorite apps I have on my iPhone. So let's get started. And before I get into the layout, I want to explain to you guys how I use focus modes on my iPhone. I want different focus modes depending on the use case. So let's start off with my personal focus mode, since this is the focus mode I spend the most time in. It's mainly used for everyday stuff when I'm not working on any specific task. The wallpaper I have on this focus mode is pretty minimal, and I just like the aesthetic of this wallpaper. I use two lock screen widgets on it, one of them is a large weather widget, and another of them is an app called Howide. I'm currently testing this app for a different video, so that is why I have it here. Down below, I set the lock screen buttons as the default flashlight app and the wallet app, just in case I have to pay for something real quick. I also have this interesting widget at the top, which is just for aesthetics. Okay, so going to the home screen, you can see I don't have too much here. I have two widgets at the top and four icons below them. The top widget is an app called Notion Calendar, and I use it as my default calendar app. I also have this widget here to quickly know what day it is and any tasks I have throughout the day. Below that, I have a shortcut widget containing 4 unique shortcuts. Each one is quite self explanatory so I'm not going to get into much detail about that. The apps I have down below are Google Apps, Google Photos, Google Home, Google Maps, and Google Drive. I primarily have Google Apps because I like to switch between Android and iOS and my data can be synced well with each other. The dock has 4 apps in it, Files, Settings, the App Store, and the Photos app. I only have Apple apps here because iOS does not allow you to have different apps there for each focus mode. So I figured I'd just put Apple apps there if that makes sense. Anyways, swiping to the left reveals this widget page which has two more widgets, screen time in this big Apple news widget. I only have this here because occasionally I mistake my iPhone to my Android phone and when you swipe left on your home screen on Android, you're greeting with this news page. I figured I would do this just to make it a smoother experience. Also, I just wanted to make use of this extra big Apple News app, I just thought it was interesting. Next, I'm going to move on to my creative focus. I primarily use this focus for creating content, whether it's for photo or video content. I have a dedicated focus mode for this to boost my creativity and to get rid of distractions. My lock screen on this focus mode contains only one widget this time and that is how I'd. The reason why I have it here is the same way as the previous one. I'm testing out this app and I just want to have quick access to it. Also, I just didn't know what else to put there. My wallpaper here is actually pretty interesting, and I even made it myself from an app which I'll mention later on. My lock screen buttons are the first way again, and a shortcut to an app called Final Cut Camera which I'll get to later as well. Getting into this home screen, it's pretty simple and minimal. I have another Notion calendar widget on the side to explain my tasks for each day along with four creative apps. Final Cut Camera, Pixelmator, Notion, and YouTube Studio. Each app has a different purpose for my creative process, mainly helping form YouTube video creation. I also have another shortcut widget at the bottom which contains four different shortcuts dedicated to the camera. These consist of portrait mode, an app called Howide which I mentioned earlier, and two separate shortcuts to the Blackmagic Camera app. Each of those two shortcuts launches the camera and sets the camera to different settings. The next few focus modes aren't used very often, but I have them just in case if I have to use them. Moving on to my sweep focus mode, it is extremely basic. Walk screen just has a sweep widget on it, and it is just there to tell me when I wake up. The home screen is also very basic. I have a screen time widget on the top, which tells me what apps I've been on for most of the day. Down below are two widgets related to sweep. One of them tracks my sweep data, and the other one just tells you when I'm supposed to wake up. The do not disturb focus mode is mainly just, well, for when I don't want to be disturbed. It's just a blank walk screen and a home screen, and it's not very interesting to talk about, so I'm just going to move on. The last focus mode I have is actually set for work. I work at a store down south called Publix, and I just use that focus mode for work reasons. If you look at the home screen, it's just a bright green background with a public app at the bottom right. Not very interesting, but it's meant to be that way since I don't want to be distracted at work. Moving back to my personal focus mode, I want to talk to you guys about the control center I have developed for myself. 
I made this control set to focus around simplicity. The top section I made for playing media just like music or podcasts. Then I have six buttons on the left side, each doing a certain action that I do somewhat often. Then on the right, I have a focus mode switcher along with the brightness and volume sliders which I use all the time. It's designed that way because I am right handed and my hand reaches up to the right side better than the left side. Now it's time that I move on to my favorite apps. Some of which use daily and some I don't use so often. And I'm going to go for these in alphabetical order. The default browser I use for my iPhone is called Arc. This app has a very clean interface and has a few features I really like. For example, Arc can block ads and trackers and queries and tabs automatically after a certain amount of time. I also use Arc on my computer and the ability to sync between devices is actually pretty interesting but I don't use that feature actually. It also has some AI features baked into it but I don't use those either since I'm not really a big fan of AI. The next app I really like is the Blackmagic Camera app, which I use to record most of my videos as you see on my channel. It has a lot of manual control, which is great for my needs and it's just a good camera app overall. I also have this app called Documents, and it's called a company called Reattle. I used to use this app a lot for pretty much everything, including file transferring, browsing, and file storage. I don't really use it much right now because I have different solutions to these common tasks, but I included this in the list because I just found it to be a good app anyway. If I am in need of a webcam, Epoch Cam Pro is my default option. Unfortunately, this app does cost a little bit of money, but there's a free version of this app that does a lot of the same things. The Pro version of this app unlocks a lot of extra controllers that I like to have, including removing the watermark at the bottom. But it's not really needed for most people, but it's still a good app overall. Final Cut Camera is another camera app I have and it's made by Apple themselves. This app is capable of manual controls and other features I find useful. Also, you may be asking why I'm listing two camera apps here. That's because I find both of them to be great and I want to list all the apps on my phone but I find that are actually good. So Final Cut Camera deserves to be mentioned as well. Next up are a few Google apps, with the first of them being Google Drive. I use Google Drive to transfer files across all my devices and I use it almost every day. Google gives 15 gigabytes of storage for free, which is very considerate of them. I usually delete my files as soon as they are done transferring, but I don't really keep them there, so 15 gigabytes is good enough for me. Gmail is my default email app, like a lot of other people do. I usually don't check my emails often, but when I do, Gmail is a good app for that. Google Home is my home management app of choice. I don't have many smart devices around my house, but the ones I do, they are controlled with Google Home. It does a great job of what it does, and I use it pretty much every day. For the final Google app I want to mention, Google Maps is excellent for giving me information for areas that I am interested in. If you don't know, I don't travel often, but when I do, this app is amazing for finding areas I don't know much about. Earlier in this video, I mentioned about this app called Howide, which I'm still testing out. Howide is a photography focused camera app, which has a lot of manual controls. I'm still testing it out, so what I do, I'll make a video of it, but for now, I don't have much to say about it. I occasionally use this app called Hypic for editing quick photos, and it does a really good job at that. I mainly use it for non-professional work, or for when I just want to experiment a bit with some stuff. I say it's one of the best apps for what it does, so I would recommend it to most people. Let's View is an app for sharing my screen to my computer, in case if I want to share something to my friends on a voice call. It does a pretty solid job at it, and it's one of the best solutions if you don't know how to share a phone screen to a computer, so I'm just going to leave it at that. For when I am bored and want to listen to some tunes, I actually keep a few tracks in an app called Moises. Moises is technically a music production tool for music developers, but I like to use it to remix some of my favorite songs, either by making them slow or faster, or by changing the pitch of them. I don't use it often, but when I do, it's fun, I guess. The next two apps work very well together, which are Notion and Notion Calendar. Notion is a productive, multi-purpose tool for groups or individuals who have a lot on their plate. I use it for a lot of things, including keeping track of my content, scripting, notes, and making lists. It is an extremely useful app, and I have it on my computer as well. It syncs flawlessly between devices, and I recommend this app if you need help with any of the reasons I mentioned a few sentences ago. Notion Calendar is, well, a calendar. It's my default calendar app of choice and it helps me keep track of important dates along with tasks that I have throughout the day. It's another amazing app and it also syncs between multiple devices if you are wondering about it. 
Next is Overcast. Overcast is a podcast app which specifies in simplicity. I occasionally listen to a podcast and I find this app to be very useful and it's better than Apple Podcasts. This is a relatively recent find so I don't have much to say about it right now. I mentioned earlier in my creative focus section but I had made that wallpaper myself. This app called Pastel makes that happen. It's a color powered app so you can store multiple color palettes and even use those color palettes as wallpapers. I made multiple already and it works very well. But I do want to make a disclaimer though. I found the app deletes palettes after a day automatically and I don't know if this is a bug or just a call through to upgrade to the paid version of the app. So make your own call about one. Next, Pixels is a royalty free photo and video library but I occasionally use for wallpapers. It's very good for what it does, but I don't use it often because of another app I'll get to soon. Pixelmator is likely the app on the Swift, but I have my phone for the longest. And basically, it's just Photoshop for iOS. It has a lot of features like Photoshop, but I don't use it much anymore since I found this website called Photop on my computer and have been using it ever since. It's still a decent app if you want to work on the go, and by the way, this app is also not free. I figured I'd just put that out there. This app, I want to disclaim it's not on my iPhone, but I have it on my Android and it's basically the same thing and it's just a really good app. And it's called PhotoPills. It has many features photographers would like, such as a shot planner, some AR tours, sunset and sunrise times, moon faces, and even some stuff I don't understand. So if you're a photographer, I highly recommend this app if you want to help your photos. This app I want to share it's called SCRL. This app is an Instagram helper basically, allowing you to make your own carousel posts from templates that are given. It's a pretty cool app, but I don't use it too often. Another cool app I have on Instagram is called Two Stories. This app allows you to make cool Instagram stories from different templates. I like to use it occasionally if I have an important announcement to make, but that isn't very often. Next, Unsplash is my preferred royalty free photo app of choice. I find it better than Pixels since it has more options to choose from, however it does not carry stock video. Vivi Sticker is another Instagram tool that I have which allows you to edit relatively aesthetic photos but I use it only for stickers and templates. I don't use it very often but I just want to mention here because I think it might be a hidden gem for some people. And the final app I want to share for you guys today is an app called Widget. Widget is a customizable widget app which you can design your own widgets for your phone in case if you don't like any of the widgets that are made by other app developers. I used this app in the past but I don't use it much anymore since I like having a simple setup and that I don't know how to design widgets for myself yet to be honest. However, if you do know how to design, this app is very good for what it does and allows you to make your own widgets for your own phone. Okay, so that's pretty much all this video has to offer. I just wanted to show you guys my iPhone setup and my favorite apps. And well, I just want to say thank you for watching for this kind of awkward video for me because to be honest, if you notice I was looking away from the camera this whole time, that's because I have been because this is my first scripted video and I might need some training to be honest. So hopefully you can forgive me on that. So I'll see you guys soon, which hopefully my next video will be about how I'd app, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.